Which banana to eat? Your choice could impact your health. Hello everyone, friends. In today's video, we will try to answer several questions about a somewhat controversial fruit, the banana. Many people like it, but we know it contains a lot of sugar. So, is it good for your health? Or should you avoid it if you are diabetic? Does it really help with cramps? How many can you eat every day? But the biggest curiosity we will address is in what form we should eat bananas to benefit from them. Bananas are a good fruit that everyone likes, they are economical and always available at the supermarket. Before continuing, dear viewers, if you appreciate the content of this video and are satisfied with it, we invite you to consider the option of subscribing to our channel or supporting us with a donation. Your support is essential for the growth and constant improvement of our channel, and it will allow us to continue producing high-quality content for you. You can do it here below, through the appropriate buttons, subscribe, and thanks. Bananas have many nutrients, including magnesium, potassium, vitamin C, and vitamin B6. However, they are also very rich in sugars. For this reason, some nutritionists might have told you to be careful with bananas, especially if you are diabetic and want to control your blood sugar. But regardless of whether you are diabetic or not, no one should overindulge in simple sugars because they are the main cause of weight gain, visceral fat increase, and all the negative consequences, including diabetes. Let's look at the details of what is inside a banana. A medium banana, about 125 grams, contains approximately 25 grams of carbohydrates. You have probably heard that carbohydrates should be reduced and controlled if you want to follow a ketogenic diet or if you are diabetic. However, the carbohydrates in a banana are composed of about 12 grams of simple sugars, 3 grams of fiber, and 10 grams of starch. Just looking at the sugar content of 12 grams, you might think that bananas are not good for you and make you gain weight. But once again, it is wrong to look at just one aspect of the food, you need to consider it as a whole. In fact, it is the other two parameters, fiber and starch, that transform a seemingly unhealthy product due to its high sugar content into a very healthy product. Fiber is essential for the proper functioning of your digestive system and for controlling blood sugar. It is the number one nutritional deficiency in modern diets. Whether you are diabetic or not, you should know that eating fiber is essential for your health. Experts recommend consuming at least 40 grams of fiber per day. Fiber has several advantages if you want to lose weight or are diabetic. It slows down the transit of food, making you feel fuller, and it also slows down the absorption of sugars. Therefore, the 3 grams of fiber in a banana can partially neutralize the sugars present in it. There is another essential factor to consider, starch. Starch is a complex sugar that, if consumed in its whole form, behaves exactly like fiber. If your banana contains enough resistant starch, it will also act like fiber, further buffering the sugars present. However, the amount of starch is variable and depends on the ripeness of the fruit. A less ripe fruit, like the one shown here, has more fiber, more resistant starch, and less simple sugar. A very ripe fruit, which is very yellow and has some black spots, will have less fiber and more simple sugar. Resistant starch is so important that studies show that integrating it into the diet of diabetic individuals helps control blood sugar. Therefore, eating a less ripe banana, a green banana, is absolutely recommended and can help control weight and blood sugar even in diabetics. However, the same cannot be said for a very ripe banana, where not only is the product itself perhaps too sugary, but the quantities can also have an impact. Bananas have a glycemic index ranging from 42 to 62. The glycemic index indicates how much and how quickly blood sugar will increase when you eat that food. As you can see, bananas have a glycemic index ranging from 42 to 62, which is considered low because, on this scale, 0 to 55 is considered low, 55 to 70 is medium, and above 70 is high. For example, white bread has a glycemic index of 100, which is why it is not recommended to eat it every day, and it is even advised to eat it only once a week or less frequently. If bananas have a low glycemic index, can you eat them every day, even two or three portions? Perhaps, perhaps not. Because in addition to the glycemic index, there is another more important value. The glycemic load, which takes into account the glycemic index but also the quantity of the product you eat. This means that through the glycemic load, we determine the impact that product will have on your health and blood sugar levels, depending on the size you eat. Here, some clarifications are needed because a very ripe banana of large size can contain up to 75 grams of sugar with few fibers and few resistant starches, 
while the same very ripe but small banana will have 18 grams and therefore a much lower impact on your blood sugar. The same difference can be made with a green banana, which is absolutely unripe. In this case, since it is less ripe, it will have more resistant starch and more fiber, so whether it is large or small, the glycemic load will be low. However, the larger it is, the more sugars you will ingest, having a greater effect on your blood sugar. What can we deduce from this information? First, bananas are a very healthy fruit that everyone can eat, even diabetics. Second, if you want to have a lesser impact on your blood sugar, the degree of ripeness can help you. If they are less ripe, the impact will be very small. If they are very ripe, the impact will be higher. The third parameter is size. A large banana has a higher glycemic load and therefore a greater impact on blood sugar compared to a small banana. For example, if you are someone who eats gelato, brioche, or white bread as a mid-morning snack, afternoon snack, or even as a dessert after lunch, then without a doubt, bananas are a much healthier alternative and will help you control your blood sugar even more. However, if you have become truly fond of bananas and eat two or three in a row and only eat them from Monday to Sunday, then the best advice is to go easy on the bananas and alternate them with other fruits. Studies show that other fruits like oranges, lemons, or red fruits have a better effect on your health and a lower glycemic impact compared to bananas. Additionally, we know that the health of your intestines is determined by the variability of its microbiota. If you always eat the same foods, your microbiota will also be the same, reducing its variability and therefore its ability to adapt. However, if you change fruits every day, your microbiota will become more diverse and better able to face external attacks, providing your body with new nutrients and information every day, resulting in greater benefits. Bananas do not make you gain weight, they are good for you and can be eaten frequently. But remember that they are one of many fruits, not the only fruit. Is it true that bananas help with cramps? Yes and no. There are two very useful minerals, magnesium and potassium, which we are often deficient in. Leg cramps are linked to a deficiency in these two minerals. However, there are certainly other vegetables and fruits with an even higher content of both magnesium and potassium, so it is not just bananas that help with cramps, but any type of fruit and vegetable. In another video about magnesium, we have already seen how there is a correlation between magnesium deficiency and diabetes. Therefore, eating bananas provides about 10% of your daily magnesium needs and will also help control diabetes. If you want to learn more about the other benefits of adding magnesium, click here. Finally, the last benefit of bananas, which I consider very important, is that they rarely cause allergies and intolerances and are therefore well tolerated even by young children. They are an excellent food for introducing fruits and vegetables to people who normally have difficulty eating them. I invite you to comment below on how you use bananas, in what recipes you use them, how often you eat them, or if you have also tried to avoid them in the past because you were afraid they would make you gain weight. We would like to know about your experience regarding the topic covered today. Share it with us in the comments and, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask them. We will gladly respond. Your like would be a source of satisfaction for us, and of course, do not forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the upcoming publications.